Hi guys, welcome back and we are continuing now with learning module 4, recording credit and sundry transactions. So let's carry on where we left off um, the other day. Well, yeah. Okay, on the 26th, purchase cold drink for 44 Rand 24 and two paper reams for 29.19 each from Stars Supermarket from Petty Cash. So once again, let's go back to the T accounts. So first of all, they do tell us that it is Petty Cash, which is an asset plus minus. And then it said cold drinks, that will be staff refreshments. which is an equity minus plus but we also got stationary so that will be under postage and stationary which is an equity minus plus but then we also don't have we don't forget about our VAT so that will be VAT input if I'm not mistaken no I'm not mistaken VAT input which is an asset plus minus so first of all, now we need to go calculate. Okay, so it's 44.24 plus 2 times 29.19 and that total is 102.6, 102.62. So petty cash credited with 102.62. So now staff refreshments and as you know you cannot um, claim that back for staff refreshments. So the full total of that will go in which will be 44.24 and then the postage and stationery, let me get my calculator, is 29.19 times 2 is 58.38 but now we can claim the VAT back on that so let's get the VAT exclusive amount so you divide it by 1.14 and that gives you 51.21 so our stationery will be um, debited with 51.21 so now do you get the VAT amount because since we are only paying the VAT on the on the stationery you can just calculate that VAT amount so that will be the VAT exclusive amount or the VAT inclusive amount minus the VAT exclusive amount. So that will be it's minus 58.38 and that gives you 7.17. So the VAT amount is 7.17. Great, so now we can look to see which journal we're going to write it into. It is the Petty Cash Journal. Uh, sorry, I just want to get my pen ready here. It's a petty cash journal. So that'll be PV13. Date is the 26th. Details is cold drinks plus um, paper. So petty cash 102.62. Postage and stationery 51.21. Staff refreshments 44.24 and the VAT input 7.17. Great stuff. Easy enough, easy peasy. Great. Are we happy? Happiness? Well, I hope so. Okay, let's continue then. Okay, the owner took a hundred rand from petty cash for personal use. Alright, so let's do our, oh, sorry I forgot my whiteboard, my wiper here, sorry about that, got it, alright, so let's do those T accounts, so we've got petty cash, asset plus minus, and we've got drawings, so petty cash depleted with 100, and your drawings get debited with 100, that's easy enough. So let's put that in there. It's PV14, date is the 27th. Um, drawings, I okay, just want to say drawings by owner. 
and then petty cash 100 and of course you cannot claim that back on cash and 100 drawings in your sundry accounts. Great stuff, it's easy enough. Ah, nothing funny so far, so let's keep it that way. Okay. So. Then, drew a cash check to pay wages 750. See, these T accounts by now, if you've practiced it, you should be able to do this with your eyes closed. Well, almost with your eyes closed. So it's bank, which is an asset plus minus, and then we've got wages, which is an equity minus plus. So the bank, what was this guy's wages, was 750. So your bank gets credited with 750, your wages gets debited with 750. And as simple as that, so that is your cash book payments. So let's go here. It's 13, 27, it was a cash check, 750 in bank, and then 750 in your wages column, which will be your sundry accounts. Awesome. Oh, these are way too easy, way too easy. Okay. So excuse me one second. Sorry about that. Okay. Drew a cash check in favor of smart offices being for settlement of the account with no discount. Purchase of stationery for 482 Rand and purchase of trading inventory for a thousand. Alright, so now we need to go have a look to see how much money do we owe them. So this is smart offices. So let's go and look at our debtors. So where is smart offices? Wait, am I right now? Sorry, let me just go have a look. Have I got the right, yeah, smart offices. Did I do that one? Sorry about that, sorry about that. Ah, sorry, sorry, my bad. It's been a very, very, very long day and yeah, my brain is not working today. Sorry about that, I apologize. All right, it's not debtors, it's creditors. Debtors buy from us, creditors we bought from. So smart offices is 886.4. So that's what we owe them. We can look in the creditors allowance journal, nothing has to be deducted. Okay, great stuff. And then we purchase stationery for 482. And then we purchase trading inventory of a thousand. So if you add those three up, you will get uh, 2368.40. Okay, so our bank, okay, let's just do this again. It's your bank, asset plus minus. Uh, the other leg, sorry, just to save time, then creditors, liability minus plus, postage and stationery, it's an equity minus plus, then, um, okay, I'm going to have to move it up here, that'll be trading inventory, it's an asset plus minus and then that input that input is an asset plus minus okay so our bank gets credited with 2368.40 our creditors gets debited with the amount that we owe is 886.4. Our postage and stationery 
uh, is 482, but that's that inclusive. So 482 divided by 1.14, and that gives you 422.81. So your post postage and stationery is 422.81. Now your trading inventory is a thousand. So your trading inventory gets debited with a uh, thousand divided by 1.14 and that gives you uh, 877.19 and then your VAT amount will be your 2368.4 minus 886.4 minus 422.81 Minus 877.19, so your VAT amount then is 182. Okay, so let's quickly put that in, the, in our cash book payments. So our cash book payments here, so the four document is 14, 27, it's smart offices, smart offices. Bank 2368.40, creditors control 886.4, VAT input 182, trading inventory 87719, and then in the sundry accounts, postage and stationery 422.81, which then is postage and stationery. Great. All right. Excellent, excellent. So let's carry on. Sorry, I do apologize if I do make mistakes. It's very easy. It's actually very easy. That's why you need to be able to, to focus and practice that you don't make the same mistakes as I make. Remember, so learn from me, learn from my mistakes, so that you don't make them. Okay, it was realized that stationery purchased for 8799.95 on 8 March 20, what, what, was recorded in the equipment account. Correct the error. Okay, so somebody also made a mistake in these books. They put stationery in the equipment instead of postage and stationery. So now they also need to correct the error. So let's quickly correct that error. Okay. So first of all, they said it was realized that stationery purchased was recorded in the equipment. So equipment is an asset plus minus and then the other leg which we have to correct will be postage and stationery. It's an equity minus plus. Okay, so when, you, when we put that amount in equipment, we added it to equipment. So in order to reverse it, we need to deduct it. So we, we debited, debited it the first time, now we need to credit that amount. So let's credit that amount. Where's that amount? Um, okay. And also one more thing is since we've already calculated that VAT, there's no change in VAT uh, because yeah, well when we purchase it, uh, money you know money went out, so it's VAT input. So the VAT part of it stays the same. We've already claimed that VAT back. And there's no change to it, so we don't have to reverse the VAT or anything. So we can just change, um, we just insert the VAT exclusive amount to this, um, to this equation. Alright, so in other words, it's 8799.95 divided by 14, and that will, and then that will be 7719.25, and then postage and stationary will be debited with 7719.25. Now that one obviously goes into our general journal. So let's quickly, uh, let's quickly do that. So I'm just looking on my crypt notes here just to save time. 
before I make another mistake. So 29, it's post teach and stationary. Debited 7719.25 and then equipment gets credited 7719.25. The little explanation is correction of error. Great stuff. Alright, so let's just highlight these ones quickly. Okay, and there. All right, on the 30th, we paid the business rent via debit order, um, 5,000 rand to, okay, to the rental experts, 5,000 rand including VAT. Okay, so let's do those T accounts quickly. Uh, the reason why I, am, I keep doing the T accounts is just for, for us, for yourself and myself, just to, re, just, just, remind, just to remind you of how everything works and to get into practice of doing it the whole time and just practicing, practicing, practicing that this stuff starts eventually becoming automatic. But in an exam, if you ever get stuck, just draw your T accounts. It's easier that, it's a lot easier that way. I know sometimes you don't have time. I mean, this exam we're writing is three and a half hours, you are pressed for time, so the more you practice, the easier it becomes. But anyway, let's carry on. Okay, so we've got that, that, and that. So it's bank, it's an asset plus minus, we're paying our rent, so it's a rent expense, equity minus plus, and then VAT input is an asset plus minus. So our bank is decreasing with 5,000. Our rent expense is debited with the VAT exclusive amount, which is 4385.96. And our VAT input gets debited with 614, 614.04. Great, so that goes into our cash book payments. So let's quickly tackle that. So it's our bank statement since it was an EFT. 30th, it's the rental experts. Bank 5000. That input 61404. And then in the Sundries account is 4385.96, which will be rent expense okay okay let's get going i'm gonna try and finish it today so remember if you've got questions there is an email address attached to this um, uh, in the description part of it you're welcome to email me and I'll try and help you as best I possibly can. Okay. Drew a cash check to restore the petty cash impressed amount. Now we've did that one last time as well. So now we have to go to the petty cash and just add up everything to see how much petty cash that we actually use. So if you add that, add up all that stuff. Uh, sorry, just need the micro. Oh, where did I put my petty cash now? Oh, never mind. I'll just look in the textbook. Okay, petty cash is 1827.12. So it's 1827.12. Okay, so that's the impressed amount. So all that means is that's all the petty cash we use and now we have to restore that amount. So let's quickly restore it. Uh, okay, see, I've already wiped that. Okay, so in other words, we've got our bank, asset plus minus, and petty cash is also asset plus minus. So our bank gets credited with, what did I say, 1827.12, and your petty cash gets debited with the same amount, 1827.12. So that is your cash book payments. 
um, cash book payments. Uh, here we go, 15, 30th, it's a cash check. Uh, it's 18, 1827.12, and in your sundry accounts, 1827.12, and that leg is Petty Cash. Great stuff. Uh, big cash, I got that one, and I got that one, and that one. Alright, next. Cash sales according to cash register roll again. Okay, I, I think you guys are probably getting tired of seeing this one the whole time. But, it's good to practice it, so let's quickly do that one. This one you should be able to do in your sleep right about now. With the amounts of times that we've um, done it. So it's bank which is an asset plus minus sales equity minus plus and let's see how money came in so it's that output I always use that rhyme if I cannot remember and then we've got the trading inventory which is an asset plus minus as well as your cost of sales which is an equity minus plus all right now I'm not gonna calculate everything I think you should be able to do that all by now. So our bank gets debited with 20142.80. Sales is an income, so it's a credit of 17669.12. And your VAT output is 2473.68. And now if you do the magic block, you will get your trading inventory gets decreased with or credited with 11779.41 and your cost of sales gets debited with 11779.41 Alright, so we can put that one in the book, that'll be cash book receipts so that'll be your cash register roll 30th cash sale analysis of receipt 20142.80 your VAT output 247368 and then your sales 17669.12 and then your cost of sales 117749.12 Alright, that you guys should be able to do by now. I'm sure you do and you have mastered that. So that is not a problem. Great. Alright, so cash sales according to cash register roll is done. Now, let's do the next one quickly. We're almost done. Almost done. Alright. Paid the rates and taxes bill as received from Ekuruleni by check. The following cost components were shown. Um, we've got assessment rates of 277.95, electricity 411.67, refuse removal 50.52, water services 397.46. All right, so let's quickly do that one. Um, so if we add up everything, the total, so that's 277.95 plus 411.67 plus 50.52 plus 397.46, we get 1137.6. Okay, so let's just draw T accounts again. Okay, it's bank, asset plus minus, then we've got rates and taxes, it's an equity which is minus plus, and then VAT input, which is an asset plus minus. Great. But now once again, what do we see we've got here? We've got assessment rates of 277.95. That's already a tax, so you do not have to pay tax on that. 
again, or you cannot, well, you, you can't pay, pay tax on tax or claim tax on tax. So, either way. So, in other words, now we have 1137 points. And now we have to deduct again. That's minus 277.95. And that gives you 859.65. Now to calculate, you divide that by 1.14. 1, 1 and then that gives you 754.08. So that's the VAT exclusive amount. So to get to the VAT amount, that will be 859.65 minus 754.08. And that gives you 105.57. Great, so let's fill it in. So our bank gets credited with 1137.6. Our, our VAT amount, our VAT input is 105.57. And then our rates and taxes will be 1137.6 minus 105.57. And that gives you... 1032.03. Right, so let's do that quickly. <coughs> oh, bless me. Sorry about that. Um, cash book payments 1630. It's a 1137.60. 105.57 VAT, 105.57 VAT, and then 1032.03, which will be rates and taxes. Okay, where's my highlighter? Highlighter and highlighter. Okay. Great. And now it shows the bank statement from A oh sorry, our bank statements from AAA Bank showed the following credits, which is uh, interest 345.28. 345.28. I need my wipey thingy. My board wiper. Now once again, remember how I explained it the previous time? of how it works with the bank, how the bank sees you. So in other words, <clears throat> sorry, your bank sees you as a liability and then bank for you is an asset plus minus. So when it says uh, your bank is a credit, so it's three, so yeah, the bank statement is a credit, so their liability has increased with three, four, five point two eight, so it's a debit for you, three, four, five point two eight. So now obviously we can see our bank is increasing, so in other words, that is interest that we have received. So the bank statement, the liability shows you a credit. So the liability for them has increased, but your bank has increased as well, because it's money that we are receiving, so that'll go into your cash book receipt. So it's interest that we have received. So that'll be on your bank statement. It's a, a, a bank directly into your bank so it does not go into your analysis of receipt is 34508 and then in the sundry 34508 and it's interest received or interest on current account. You can write it any way that you would like. Okay. So just remember that again, if you see a bank statement, just remember how the bank sees you. And the bank sees you as a liability, so if it's a credit for the bank, it's a debit for you. 
So that's good news for you. Other way around, you would be paying it. So let's look at the almost the last ones. It says the bank statement shows the following debits. So once again, we're going to work. I'm going to write everything out now. Okay, well, let me just first read before I continue there. It says the debit on the bank statement is a debit order to SA Insurance for your insurance 625. And then the bank charges of 312.6, including VAT and a government levy of 2 rand 50. Okay, so the same story. When the bank is in a credit, it's a debit for you, which is good. It means you're receiving money. When it's a debit on the bank account, it's a credit for you, which means you are paying money. Okay, so let's do this. So it's a bank asset plus minus, and then we have the insurance, and then we have the VAT um, money went out, so it's VAT input. So that'll be input asset plus minus, insurance equity minus plus. Great. So let's look at the first one, debit order for insurance, 625. So our bank is decreasing with 625. The insurance will be the VAT exclusive amount. Yep. Insurance is your VAT exclusive amount, which will be 548.25. And then your VAT will be the 625 minus 548.25 gives you 76.75. All right. So let's quickly do that in our books. So this will be on our cash book payments, which is your bank statement, 30th SA insurance, that is 625, that input 76.75, 548.25 in the sundry column for your in. Insurance. All right. And then last but not least, we have your bank charges. So your bank charges So your bank decreases with 312.6. Then you have your bank charges. So equity minus plus and you have once again money goes out so it's that input it's an asset plus minus so now once again now we have to go and calculate it because they say we do have a government levy of two rent 50 so that'll be 312.6 minus 250 and that gives us if I can find my calculator of course, I did not calculate it over there. Okay, so it's 312.6 minus 250 gives you 310.10. Okay, so 310.10 divided by 1.14. That gives you... 272.02 Okay, so now we deduct the 310 0.10 and that gives you 38.08 Okay, so our VAT input amount is 38.08 and then our bank charges will be 312.6 minus 38.08 and that gives you 274.52. 274.52. So let's write that one quickly in your cash book payments. Cash book payments, here we go. It's again on the bank statement. 30th AAA Bank. Bank 312.60, the 
in 38.08 VAT and then 274.52 bank charges. Great stuff. Now, sorry, let me just highlight again. All right. And now the almost last part of this is the duplicate of the bank deposit slips for April 2014. So, let's just go look at this. So this will be in your cash book receipts. Remember what I said about the analysis of receipt column? That is whenever you have an entry there, whenever your transaction takes place, if it hasn't been paid into the bank directly, you put it in your analysis of receipts column. If something's been paid directly to your bank, you write it in the bank column. So you only complete the bank part of it after you physically deposited the money into the bank. Okay, so for now, the money when it's here, it's still in your possession at your place of work. Then you take it to the bank and you bank it. So we've got the following bank slips. So the 8th of April is there and we deposited 13650. And there we can see, so that day we deposited 13650. Okay, so let's just, oh, here's my ruler. So let's just draw a line. We have that. The next one, on the 11th of April, we got a deposit slip of 18736.58. So in other words, that'll be 15236.58 plus 3500. And that gives us that amount exactly. So we draw our line to say we've deposited those two days. The total 18736.58. Then on the 21st, let's get the 21st. Okay, that'll be those two. We have 21973.65, 21973.65, yes, so that'll be those two added up, the 11712.75 plus 10755.9, and that gives us that total of 21973.65. Okay, and then on the 25th, it's only that one transaction of 15390, that's the deposit slip, so that day we deposited that money, 15390.00, and lastly, we paid in 20142.8, and that, that's the same as our deposit slip, so it's 20142. Point eight zero. Okay, well, so we have completed this exercise. We're not completely done. I'm going to do one more movie on it. Um, well, basically, I'm just going to add up everything now. Just going to add everything up. Oh, I forgot to draw this line here. And then once again, we will go through once again, we will just go through on how you, how you calculate or how you work out which account gets debited, which account gets credited. And then I'm going to do a few more examples, how you transfer that to your general ledger. All right, so are we happy with that? Thank you very much. I will see you again for the last and final lesson. Thank you, guys. Oh, I almost forgot my focus to focus it, that you can see what we've done. So let's quickly do that. Sorry about that again. I don't know what's going on with me today. I'm making so many mistakes. Well, not mistakes. But yeah, I think everybody has a bad day sometime.
I just hope you guys can make make out this stuff on your computers. I mean, for me, yeah, it looks quite clear, but I hope it comes out clear when you open it up. <laughs>